Congratulations, Barn. You got him. Yeah. He's out of town, smart Alex. I'm throwing the book at him. Look, Sheriff, you haul me in just to bug me with this kid. While you're wasting your time, I'm not going to listen. The 1960s marked a significant era for American television, with shows that had an enduring appeal. This is a jailhouse. Let's show some respect. <laughs> becoming an intrinsic part of American pop culture. Among them, The Andy Griffith Show stood out, a warm, nostalgic view of life in the fictional town of Mayberry, North Carolina. With a cast boasting the likes of Ron Howard, Don Knotts, Francis Bavier, and the show's namesake, Andy Griffith, it's not surprising that the series still resonates with audiences today. Barney, you're all right. I'm fine. The guard's always asleep, the cash drawers are left open, a faulty vault, no alarm system. Well, I don't know, maybe someday you people will learn. This video dives deep into the intricacies of the show, its legacy, cast dynamics. Miss Crowley gave it to me, photographed by the New York Yankees. And various interesting facts that have become part of television folklore. Dot origins and development of the Andy Griffith Show. The origin of The Andy Griffith Show can be traced back to an unexpected place, a February 1960 episode of The Danny Thomas Show titled, Danny Meets Andy Griffith. The Danny Thomas Show, starring Danny Thomas. This singular episode presented the concept of a sheriff without a gun in a small town, the foundation upon which Mayberry would eventually be built. While initially it was just a testing ground, the appeal of the main character played by Andy Griffith was evident. The small town charm, combined with the comedy and depth of Griffith's portrayal. About, oh, I believe it, about six years ago, I believe it was. Only trouble is, so far, we just raised enough money for the stop sign. Was enough to convince producers to give him a show of his own. Just a few months later, Andy Griffith, along with Don Knotts, would embark on a new television journey, one that would solidify their places in television history. Spanning from 1960 to 1968, the Andy Griffith Show was a mainstay on American televisions. They regard me as an outsider. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> you mean like an interloper? <laughs> they do. They do. Over its eight-season run, it painted a picture of American heartland life, exploring themes of family, friendship, community, and the gentle pace of life in a small town. You ready? With every episode, the show created a microcosm of experiences, life lessons, and hearty laughter. Throughout its tenure on air, the show maintained high ratings, a testament to its enduring popularity and the beloved characters who inhabited Mayberry. One of the unique achievements of The Andy Griffith Show was its consistency in delivering quality episodes. Over the course of its run, the series produced a staggering 249 episodes, each one contributing to the tapestry of Mayberry's life. The early years, specifically the first 159 episodes, showcased the world of Mayberry in classic black and white. This choice, while largely dictated by the technology of the times, contributed to the nostalgic, timeless appeal of the series. Yet as television technology advanced, the show embraced change, transitioning to color for its last 90 episodes. This shift from black and white to color mirrored the evolution of television during the 1960s, marking the show's ability to adapt and remain contemporary. Achieving and maintaining high ratings is no easy task for any television show, let alone one that ran for almost a decade. Yet, The Andy Griffith Show made it look effortless. Its rating success culminated when it concluded in 1968, achieving a dominant Nielsen rating. This feat placed it alongside television giants like I Love Lucy and Seinfeld, an honor that illustrates its widespread appeal and influence. The Andy Griffith Show's lasting legacy can be attributed to many factors. The impeccable casting, engaging storylines, and the ability to blend humor with heart made it a favorite among audiences. However, its beginnings on The Danny Thomas Show, the growth from a spin-off to a standalone classic, and its successful eight-year run stand as a testament to its quality. It wasn't just a show, it was a phenomenon, reflecting the simplicity and charm of an era gone by while addressing universal themes that continue to resonate with audiences even today. The journey from 1960 to 1968 might have seemed brief in the larger scope of television history. 
But the indelible market left ensures that the stories of Mayberry will be told and retold for generations to come. Behind the scenes. Every classic show, no matter its on-screen charm and simplicity, often has a bevy of behind-the-scenes stories that add layers to its legacy. The Andy Griffith Show, beloved as it was, has its share of secrets and lesser-known facts that, over time, have become an integral part of its folklore. A rather famous incident from the show's early years involves a rockin' Andy's hand. It might sound like a plot from one of the episodes, but it was an off-screen event that had significant on-screen implications. During a scene, young Ron Howard, playing Opie, was required to throw a rock. Unfortunately, the throw went astray, landing squarely on Andy Griffith's hand. To the dismay of all on set, Griffith's hand was indeed broken. However, the production didn't halt. Instead, subtle changes were made to accommodate this unforeseen incident. For several episodes following the accident, viewers could see Andy with his hand in his pocket, artfully disguising the cast he was wearing. In the world of television, where production schedules are tight and budgets even tighter, the show must go on, and indeed it did, with a pocketed hand leading the way. Yet the tales from Mayberry aren't limited to accidental injuries. One particularly intriguing fact revolves around the legend Don Knotts himself. When he first appeared as the iconic deputy Barney Fife, he did so without the assurance of a long-term contract. Knotts had seen the pilot episode of The Andy Griffith Show and felt a character like Barney could add a comedic twist to the proceedings. He approached Andy Griffith with the idea, and Griffith, recognizing the potential, agreed. Yet there was no formal contract in place for Knotts during the early days of the show. It was a gamble, one based on mutual trust and artistic vision. As the series progressed and Barney Fife became an inseparable part of Mayberry, Knotts's place in the show was solidified, and the lack of an initial contract became a quirky footnote in the show's storied history. There's also a more subtle yet fascinating aspect to the behind-the-scenes magic of the Andy Griffith show. Many casual viewers may not realize that the Mayberry they came to love wasn't actually a sprawling town, but was primarily filmed on a backlot at Daisy Lou Studios in Culver City, California. The exterior scenes of the town, from Floyd's barbershop to the courthouse, were all part of this elaborate set. It's a testament to the show's production quality that the constructed facades of Mayberry felt so genuine, so lived in, that audiences across America believed they were peeking into a real town every week. Each of these lesser-known facts and secrets adds depth to the legacy of The Andy Griffith Show. They provide a glimpse into the challenges, creativity, and camaraderie that went into producing one of America's most beloved TV shows. From dealing with unforeseen injuries to taking casting gambles and recreating an entire town on a studio backlot, the tales from behind the camera are as engaging as those in front of it. These anecdotes serve as a reminder that creating timeless television is not just about the stories that unfold on screen, but also about the passion, commitment, and sometimes sheer luck that shape them from behind the scenes. Key Characters and Their Dynamics In the landscape of classic American television, few shows are held in the same regard as The Andy Griffith Show, and central to its enduring appeal are its key characters. Their relationships, both on and off-screen, played a crucial role in shaping the show's narrative, humor, and sentiment. Andy Taylor, the sagacious sheriff of Mayberry, stood as the anchor of the show. Portrayed by Andy Griffith, he brought a warmth and wisdom to his role, creating a father figure many could relate to. His dynamics with his young son, Opie, portrayed by Ron Howard, showcased one of the most genuine father-son relationships ever seen on television. Their interactions were tender and poignant, and they effortlessly depicted the challenges and joys of single parenting. Beside Andy, Barney Fife, played with impeccable comic timing by Don Knotts, well, when they first pinned on the old bag... Barney, uh, would you excuse me for just about five minutes? I've got to run next door to Uncle Floyd's barbershop. Right now? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you see, his vibrator's on the blink, and I promised him I'd fix it. That was over an hour ago. I'll be right back. Oh, maybe I could go with you. ...was an indispensable part of the series. His well-meaning yet often bumbling nature served as a comedic counterpoint to Andy's level-headed demeanor. Interestingly, early episodes referred to Andy and Barney as cousins a familial tie that was quietly shifted as the show continued. 
As seasons progressed, they were simply best friends, a change that might have been motivated by the need for a simpler and more universally relatable dynamic. Their camaraderie, irrespective of whether they were kin or close friends, became the stuff of television legend, with their interplay forming some of the most memorable moments of the series. Aunt B, meanwhile, was the quintessential caregiver. Francis Bavier's portrayal of Aunt B combined strength with vulnerability, making her the emotional backbone of the Taylor household. She often served as a mediator, particularly in her interactions with Opie, teaching him valuable life lessons while providing love and care. Her presence enriched the narrative, offering a familial completeness to the Taylor home. However, as serene and harmonious as Mayberry appeared on screen, off-screen dynamics were not always as smooth. The real-life relationship between Andy Griffith and Francis Bavier in particular was notably turbulent. Despite their on-screen chemistry, the two reportedly clashed often during production. Bavier, a classically trained actress, sometimes found Griffith's more laid-back style unprofessional. Griffith, on his part, felt misunderstood and hurt by Bavier's distant demeanor. This discord was not merely limited to passive disagreements. There were times when Bavier refused to be in the same room as Griffith. Their disagreements became so widely known that they remain a topic of discussion, even decades after the show aired. Yet what's particularly intriguing about their off-screen discord is the sheer professionalism both actors displayed on screen. The familial warmth between Andy and Aunt B felt genuine, with no hint of the animosity that reportedly existed behind the scenes. It is a testament to both actors' immense talent that they could set aside personal differences and deliver performances that felt authentic and touching. It's also worth noting the off-screen bond between Griffith and Howard. The young Howard was like a son to Griffith, with the latter often guiding and mentoring the budding actor. Their bond was palpable, echoing the genuine affection visible in their on-screen interactions. Similarly, Griffith and Knotts shared a close bond, with Griffith often praising Knotts's unparalleled comic talent. Gomer, you'll be a better man if you'll try to think of us all working together for a common cause. And crediting him for the show's success. The Andy Griffith Show presented a tableau of characters who, despite their idiosyncrasies, formed the heart of a community. The on-screen dynamics, rooted in genuine affection, humor, and understanding, struck a chord with audiences, making Mayberry a town many wished they could call home. And even with the off-screen differences, the commitment to the craft and the story prevailed, underlining the timeless allure of the show. The layers of character relationships, both in fiction and reality, serve as a testament to the multifaceted nature of human interactions and the art of storytelling, icons and lasting symbols. The Andy Griffith Show, over its span and subsequent syndication, has become synonymous with a bygone era of television, a time when stories were simpler, the humor was gentler, and the values were profound. Several symbols from the show have earned an iconic status, each weaving into the very fabric of American popular culture. These icons not only contributed to the show's identity, but also evoked emotions, values, and aspirations that made the narrative richer. Arguably, the most recognized image from the series is the Squad Car, a Ford Galaxy police cruiser cruising through the streets of Mayberry. While, on the surface, it was just a vehicle, the Squad Car embodied more than that. It symbolized law, order, and safety in a town where crime was minimal and most disputes were settled over a conversation. Andy and Barney driving around in the squad car was a visual reassurance, a testament to the town's tranquility. Yet, there was a touch of irony. In a place where everyone knew everyone and major crimes were scarce, the car's presence was more about familiarity and comfort than actual policing. Then there's the fictional town of Mayberry itself. Mayberry, with its quaint charm and close-knit community, is an idealized representation of small-town America. While Mayberry's tales were infused with humor and warmth, the town stood as a beacon of community values, integrity, and kindness. For many viewers, it wasn't just a setting, but a nostalgic escape, a reflection of an America they knew or aspired for. 
The white picket fences, the friendly general store, Floyd's barber shop, and the local diner all became emblematic of a lifestyle many yearned for. Mayberry was more than a place. It was a state of mind. It symbolized camaraderie, simplicity, and a slower pace of life. Yet, what encapsulated the spirit of the show and has remained timeless in its appeal is its whistled theme song, The Fishing Hole. Well, now take down your fishing pole. The song evokes an immediate sense of nostalgia and contentment. From the first note, it paints a picture of lazy summer days, fishing poles in hand, and life's simple joys. Beyond just being catchy, the theme captured the essence of the show. A life where happiness was found in the mundane, where relationships were cherished, and where every problem had a solution over a chat on the porch. It was a melody that resonated with viewers, not because of its complexity, but because of its sheer simplicity and the emotions it elicited. Even today, those notes transport listeners back to a place where the worries of the world took a back seat, if only for half an hour. It's fascinating how certain elements from a television series can transcend their original context and become deeply embedded in a nation's consciousness. The Squad Car, Mayberry, and the Whistled theme are not just elements of a show. They're touchstones of a cultural phenomenon. They evoke a sense of yearning, representing ideals of community, simplicity, and comfort. Over the years, these icons have taken on a life of their own, becoming subjects of memorabilia, theme park attractions, and countless tributes. In the annals of television history, few shows have left an indelible mark quite like The Andy Griffith Show. Its icons, rich with meaning and emotion, have ensured that Mayberry and its beloved inhabitants live on, not just as memories of a show, but as symbols of an ethos, an enduring vision of an America that resonates with the heart. Beyond Mayberry, the stars after the show. When the last episode of The Andy Griffith Show was aired in 1968, it marked the end of an era for its ardent followers. However, for the actors that brought Mayberry to life, it was only the beginning of an onward journey, filled with new roles, ambitions, and artistic pursuits. The post-Mayberry careers of these artists reflect the diverse tapestry of their talents, ensuring their place in the annals of entertainment history. Andy Griffith, the titular sheriff of Mayberry, enjoyed sustained success in the television industry even after hanging up his sheriff's hat. One of his most notable contributions post-Mayberry was his portrayal of Ben Matlock in the legal drama Matlock. Griffith's character, a crafty Southern attorney with a penchant for unraveling complex cases and a fondness for hot dogs, quickly became a fan favorite. Running for nine seasons, Matlock showcased a different facet of Griffith's acting prowess, proving his versatility and range. Beyond acting, Griffith also ventured into music and released several gospel albums, garnering both acclaim and awards in the process. Ron Howard, who started his journey as the lovable Opie Taylor, transitioned from being in front of the camera to becoming one of the most accomplished directors in Hollywood. Howard's directorial prowess has spanned genres, from the dramatic depths of Apollo 13 to the whimsical world of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And Oscar goes to Ron Howard. His Oscar-winning film, A Beautiful Mind, stands testament to his craft and narrative acumen. Apart from movies, Howard has also left his mark on the documentary scene. It's worth noting that Ron's foundations in Mayberry, observing behind-the-scenes workings, might have subtly molded his directorial path. Howard's evolution from a child actor to an acclaimed director is a testament to his enduring passion and commitment to storytelling. Don Knotts, the bumbling yet endearing deputy Barney Fife, had an extensive career in television that continued to flourish long after his Mayberry days. After winning five Emmy Awards for his portrayal of Barney, Knotts explored a variety of roles. He starred in several films, including the popular The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, The Incredible Mr. Limpet, and The Apple Dumpling Gang. His knack for comedic timing remained impeccable. Moreover, Knotts had recurring roles in television series like Three's Company and even reunited with Griffith in some episodes of Matlock, much to the delight of fans. Francis Xavier, better known to audiences as Aunt B, had a varied career that spanned both stage and screen. Before her role as the heartwarming caretaker of Andy and Opie, 
Xavier was a seasoned stage actress, having performed in numerous plays across the country. After The Andy Griffith Show, she reprised her role as Aunt B in the show's sequel, Mayberry RFD. While her transition from stage to screen was smooth, Xavier often expressed her love for theater, citing its immediacy and connection with the audience. As the curtains fell on Mayberry, the stars of The Andy Griffith Show embarked on journeys that took them to varied avenues of the entertainment world. From gripping legal dramas and cinematic masterpieces to slapstick comedies and stage performances, the legacy of these artists is a testament to their unparalleled talent and adaptability. While Mayberry remains an indelible part of their identities, their post-show achievements prove that the stars of Mayberry had much more to offer, leaving behind legacies that span well beyond the confines of the idyllic town, influences, and real-life inspirations. The world of Mayberry, while fictional in nature, had elements rooted deeply in reality. The on-screen dynamics, especially between the central characters, were shaped, in no small part, by the personal experiences and backgrounds of the actors. This is particularly evident in the relationship between Andy and Opie Taylor. Their bond, while heartwarming on screen, echoed the real-life dynamics and inspirations from the lives of Andy Griffith and Ron Howard. At the heart of The Andy Griffith Show was the tender relationship between father and son, a portrayal that felt authentic, touching, and real. Andy Griffith, in numerous interviews, credited his own father, Carl Lee Griffith, as an inspiration for his portrayal of the television father. Carl, a carpenter by profession, was known for his strong work ethic, innate kindness, and understated wisdom. These qualities, which resonated in the character of Sheriff Andy Taylor, became emblematic of the father figure many grew to love. Andy often recollected moments from his childhood, which he subtly infused into his portrayal, making the character relatable and grounded. Carl's humility, quiet strength, and unwavering support found a reflection in Andy's relationship with Opie. Ron Howard, too, drew upon personal experiences to bring depth and authenticity to Opie Taylor. Rance Howard, Ron's father and a noted actor and writer in his own right, had a significant influence on shaping Opie's character. Rance, with his background in writing, often provided insights into how Opie might react in certain situations, given his age, the context of the 1960s, and the values of a small-town upbringing. His input became invaluable, ensuring that Opie's reactions and decisions remained true to the character's age and environment. Furthermore, the dynamic between Ron and Rance Howard in real life paralleled the close bond between Opie and Andy. Ron has often spoken about the profound influence of his father on his life, both professionally and personally. Rance was not just a guiding force in his career, but also instilled in him the values of humility, hard work, and the importance of family. These teachings naturally seeped into the relationship portrayed on screen. The moments where Andy teaches Opie life lessons, the heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and even the playful banter all these carried undertones of the real-life bond between Ron and Rance. In the tapestry of Mayberry, reality and fiction intertwined seamlessly, creating a world that felt both familiar and aspirational. The influences and inspirations from the real lives of its leading actors added layers of depth and authenticity to the narrative. As viewers watched Andy and Opie navigate the challenges and joys of life, they were witnessing echoes of real-life dynamics, values, and bonds. This melding of life and art is what made The Andy Griffith Show resonate with audiences across generations, making it a timeless classic. Trivia, fun facts, and unique aspects. The Andy Griffith Show remains one of America's most beloved television series, not just for its heartwarming stories and endearing characters, but also for its subtle intricacies and details that dedicated fans have come to cherish over the years. Every show has its share of behind-the-scenes tales, fun tidbits, and on-screen Easter eggs, and this series was no exception. One particularly quirky and consistent aspect of the show that keen-eyed fans might have noticed is the calendar hanging in Floyd's barbershop. While the months and years came and went in Mayberry, that calendar remained steadfastly unchanged. It's one of those fun details that, once noticed, becomes an amusing topic of discussion among fans. 
It's speculated that this might have been an intentional choice, a nod to the timeless and unchanging nature of Mayberry itself. In a world where life's pace felt slower, where values remained constant, perhaps it was fitting that time, at least in Floyd's barbershop, stood still. Speaking of Floyd's barbershop, did you know that Floyd Lawson, the town barber, was initially played by a different actor? In the character's first appearance, he was portrayed by Walter Baldwin. However, from his second appearance onward, Floyd was brought to life by the inimitable Howard McNear, who made the character an unforgettable part of the Mayberry Ensemble. Then there's the affectionate nickname Ange, used by Don Knotts' character Barney Fife to refer to Andy. While it might seem like a random diminutive form of Andy, there's more to it. In reality, Don Knotts, who was close friends with Andy Griffith off-screen, used to call him Ange in their personal conversations. This real-life term of endearment was carried over to the show, adding another layer of authenticity to their on-screen camaraderie. The show's theme song, known to many as The Fishin' Hole, is another treasure trove of trivia. While most recognize the cheerful whistling that opens every episode, few know that Andy Griffith himself recorded a version with lyrics. Though this lyrical version wasn't used as the show's main theme, it's a delightful listen for any fan. The courthouse set was also home to its share of quirks. The two cells within it often showcased a unique inconsistency. While both cells were frequently seen throughout the series, the one on the right was almost always the one in use. The left cell, despite being functional, was rarely occupied. One can only wonder if there was a behind-the-scenes reason for this preference, or if it was merely one of those unintentional consistencies that developed over time. Another fun tidbit revolves around the man behind the character of Goober Pyle, George Lindsay. Lindsay, who portrayed the affable auto mechanic, had an educational background that might surprise many. Before stepping into the world of acting, Lindsay was a trained and certified teacher, having earned his bachelor's degree in bioscience. Lastly, there's a charming anecdote related to the show's final episode. As the series came to a close, a scene required Andy and Opie to walk away from the fishing hole. However, Ron Howard, in an unscripted move, decided to run back and grab a fish they had caught earlier. This spontaneous decision was kept in the final cut, a beautiful symbol of cherishing memories as one moves forward. These little snippets, quirks, and lesser-known facts add to the charm of The Andy Griffith Show. They speak to the organic, genuine nature of the series, where off-screen realities seamlessly melded with on-screen narratives, where actors brought their personal touches to their characters, and where the fictional town of Mayberry became, for many, a very real place of nostalgia and warmth.